Big spoiler warning. This video will contain gameplay mechanics gotten through the story, so if you are not past the opening part of Chapter 6, I would highly advise not watching this video. You will not be able to do this until you are past that anyway. Please come back later and enjoy the game. Alright, I really was not planning to release a video today, but this is so utterly ridiculous and hilarious that I just had to show it off. This seems to be an incredible oversight in the combat system, likely because Monolith did not think anyone would attempt it. But using the right combination of abilities, your entire team can become completely invincible in combat. As in, you will take no damage, have no debuffs affect you, have no reaction to stop you. It is insane. There is some important setup you are going to need to do for this. I do want to say that my current setup is not optimized for damage at all, only a proof of concept of the invincibility thing. And you might need to get a certain class to level 20 to get the talent art. First things first, you will need to have the unlimited sword talent art unlocked. This is basically the key part of the strategy as it grants invincibility for Noah for just a bit after activating it. It's not very long at all, but it does indeed grant this buff, so while Noah has this, he will not take any damage or have anything affect him. You can run this in any class if you want, but you will have to be either a Signifer with Noah or a Kevis class to get access to Signifer Master Arts. One of Noah's Master Arts needs to be Resonant Flag. This is an art that grants all current buffs to all allies, and if you're playing Signifer class, then just have it as one of the arts. This is essentially the crux of the strategy. We pass invincibility to the entire party with this. However, there are a couple problems that might arise from this. Firstly, Unlimited Sword has a cooldown of 10. This means that normally it would take a pretty long time to get to this. Secondly, activating it replaces all of your art so you wouldn't see Resonant Flag on your art list. And thirdly, invincibility only lasts for like 5 to 10 seconds or so. Well, fortunately, there is a solution to all of these issues. What we want now is a Signifer with Glittering Melody as their talent art. This is a very strong ability that will pause all buff timers on all allies, essentially granting stasis on any buff currently active to keep it active as long as the stasis lasts. The other arts you'll want are Oriole, Resonant Flag, and Heal Harmony. On the other side, you'll likely want something like Advanced Cooldown to grant a field effect to charge the talent art up faster. The other arts do not matter as much. These are the only two characters that matter, Noah and the Signifer who can be anyone. The other four characters, the only thing you want is for there to not be a tank class anywhere in the lineup. This is important for something else. The next absolutely vital thing we want is Capable Hands. This will fill the talent gauge to 100% when maxed out at the start of battle, and can be gotten from the Flash Fencer class. This means you can start any battle with Noah's Lucky 7 instantly, and instantly get that invincibility. You also want the same thing on your Signifer, so they can start the battle with their Stasis ability. What this allows you to do is activate Noah's invincibility, swap immediately to your Signifer, in my case Senna, and use Glittering Melody to instantly apply stasis. For some reason, Noah's invincibility counts as a buff that can be frozen, and this freeze lasts for quite a while too, much longer than the initial duration of invincibility. The other two skills that you really want are Strengthening Gambit to extend buff duration by 50%, and Protector's Pride to boost recharge by 50%, as we have no defenders in our party, we will always get this boost, and it affects talent arts as well. Similarly, we also have this ability on Noah. The reason being is that after Noah gets his invincibility effect stasis, we need to unequip our weapon by holding down A, then equip our weapon again. This will allow us to keep invincibility but put away Lucky 7, meaning we get access to our normal arts. If you're fighting a dangerous enemy, you want to get Resonant Flag up as soon as possible to share your buff. This can be replaced if you feel confident enough though. In the accessory department, I am also running a similar effect to boost recharge further. This is actually pretty strong in general to reduce cooldowns in a lineup with zero defenders. Senna of course has the same thing so we can get the talent art back up sooner, and all other arts will recharge much faster. The other slots do not matter too much. That's really all the setup you need to be able to pull this strategy off, so allow me to show it to you in a practical application and show the exact process so you can see just how ridiculous and funny this can be. So first things first, as soon as you enter combat, you want to activate Noah's Talon Art. This will grant you the invincibility thing that you really, really want. Everything in the entire strategy relies on this. As soon as that is activated, you're going to want to swap to your Signifer and activate Glittering Melody. So once that is gone, you'll be able to have invincibility on Noah, which means you can dequip your weapon and then re-enter the fight. While everyone else is dying, that doesn't really matter too much as long as the healers can revive them. That is really the only important thing. Once you get Resident Flag charged up on Noah, you want to immediately use it, and you'll be able to pass Invincibility to everyone currently alive, so everyone except for Tyon now is invincible. So from there, we swap back to the Signifer and just start spamming everything we've got, and without a Defender in the party, we should be able to get our Talon Art up pretty, pretty quickly. 
It shouldn't take too long to get it back, and we can just keep doing this over and over. And since Glittering Melody freezes all buffs, we will eventually get all buffs from Oriole and everything else, so the entire party is going to have every single buff before the end of this fight, which is really, really funny. And we can just reapply Glittering Melody every time it comes up. It'll, keep, it'll refreeze all the buffs, and we keep Invincibility the entire time. It is absolutely ridiculous, and it'll never run out as long as you just keep up this the art spam and make sure you keep using Glittering Melody off cooldown. Now, I turned off enemy damage numbers and options so you can't actually see all the invincibility procs on this particular fight. I did turn it back on in a different fight just so I could show it off more clearly. But regardless, you can see that I am not taking any damage at all because this is just utterly ridiculous. I don't know how Monolith did not think of this themselves or how this could be abused. But maybe they never expected you to dequip your weapon with invincibility just under stasis and then coming back out and spread it to everyone. But since it does count as a buff, you can do that. So that's really, really funny. And, uh... Yeah, I guess it kind of completely trivializes the game if you just are looking to beat things. Because you don't need a defender, you don't need anything. You can just be completely invincible as long as you can pull off the strategy before everyone dies. You can even give Noah the um, accessory to revive other allies if you're really, really worried about that. And he'd be able to revive, pass invincibility to that ally, who would be hopefully your healer with um, Glittering Melody. And then you'd just be able to recover from there pretty easily. So, there's a lot of things you can do to keep this strategy going and not have any issues with it at all. And, overall, eventually you can win any fight. Right now, this setup, like I said, is not very optimized. I have five healers, for instance, and only two DPS, and Noah's not even set up amazingly for DPS because he has to pull off the Lucky 7 strategy. So, we're not doing a ton of damage here at all. Um, you could probably get away with only, like, two healers if um, you wanted to or something like that. I just wanted to show the proof of concept in this video more than anything. So two, D two healers, five DPS could probably end a lot of these fights much, much quicker, and you'd just be able to do a lot of really, really funny things with it. So looking forward to seeing how this might affect uh, the metagame of this game in the future, if you want to say. I guess it's just one more thing that makes Signifer really, really broken, and uh, I, I think at this point it's very clear that's the best class in the game. But we can talk about that more in a different video. So yeah, I mean, let me show it off again against level 1 and show off the invincibility and vulnerability, that kind of stuff with that, and how it just doesn't matter at all. You could do the exact same setup, although if you're level 1, your accuracy is going to be terrible, so you're going to have to use your art cooldowns in order to get the recharge on Resonant Flag, but that's not really a big deal at all. Otherwise, it's just the same kind of thing. Even if someone dies, your healers can revive them, and as long as you have invincibility on Noah, you are basically fine. You can also put the accessory that um, keeps your characters alive with 1 HP no matter what for like 5 seconds, which can help you get to the invincibility if you need to, which could also be another strategy to make sure you only need like 1 healer or something. So that is also an option, but once you get that invincibility on everyone, you're basically good to go. Like, even at level 1, he cannot hurt us at all, and you should be able to see here that every time he attacks, it'll just show invincible, which is really funny, and no matter what he does, it's going to continue like this, so... I think that's probably enough of a demonstration, you probably get the point at this point, and being able to see level 1 enemies just take no da- or level 1 allies just take no damage from level 200 super boss enemies is- it, I- I cannot believe this is in the game. It's just absolutely ridiculous. I would not be surprised if this, this gets patched out in the future just because of how ridiculous it is, but I did want to show it off and kind of showcase how to do it if you want to do it yourselves before it gets patched, so yeah! I do think that's going to cover it for this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed and are looking forward to future guides and content that will hopefully be a bit more serious and not abuse the game mechanics this hard. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, look for more guides in the future. I'll be happy to make plenty, plenty more. And yeah, have a wonderful and blessed day.